Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thanks, Senator Reid and members of this committee for allowing me to be here to talk about your Army. It's my 12th week on the job as Acting Secretary of the Army, and it's truly an honor to be back on the Army team. I've traveled to see our soldiers, our civilians and their families in Kentucky, Missouri, Texas, and Kansas, and also to Iraq and Afghanistan. And the selfless service and dedication of our team should inspire us all. We are tasked with the solemn responsibility to fight and win our nation's wars and to keep our families safe here at home. Our Army must produce ready units today to deter and to defeat our nation's enemies, defend the homeland, project power, and win decisively. And by ready, we mean units that are fully manned, trained for combat, fully equipped according to their design structure, and led by competent leaders. We must also be ready, be ready for our future fights by investing in modernization and research and development. We do not want our soldiers to have a fair fight. They must have the technical and tactical advantage over our enemies. With our $125.1 billion based budget request, our Army will focus its efforts on rebuilding readiness for large-scale, high-end ground combat today. We do so because ignoring readiness shortfalls puts our nation at greatest risk for the following reasons. First, readiness wins wars. Our Army has never been the largest in the world, and at times we have not been the best equipped. But since World War II, we have recognized that ready soldiers, properly manned, trained, equipped, and led can beat larger or more determined forces. Whether confronting the barbaric acts of ISIS or the desperation of North Korea, our army must be prepared to execute and to win. We train like we fight, and our army must be ready to fight tonight. Next, readiness deters our most dangerous threats and assures our allies. We are reminded with alarming frequency that great power conflicts are not dead. Today, they manifest themselves on a regional basis. Both Russia and China are challenging America's willingness and ability to enforce international standards of conduct. A ready army provides America the strength to deter such actions and reassure our partners throughout the world. Readiness also makes future training less costly. Continuous operations since 2001 have left our force proficient and stability in counterterrorism operation. But our future command sergeants major and brigade commanders have not had the critical combat training experiences as junior leaders trained for high-end ground combat. Investing in readiness today builds a foundation necessary for long-term readiness. And finally, readiness prepares our force for potential future conflicts. We cannot fight the last fight. Our Army must be, be prepared to face the high-end and advanced combat power of an aggressive Russia, or more likely, Russian aggression employed by surrogate actors. The budget, this budget, dedicates resources to develop solutions for this, to allow our force to develop new concepts informed by the recommendations of the National Commission on the Future of the Army. Our formations must first be ready to execute against current and emerging threats. The choice, though, to invest in near-term readiness does come with risk. Smaller modernization investments risk our ability to fight and win in the future. We have no new modernization programs this decade. Smaller investments in end strength risk our ability to conduct multiple operations for sustained periods of time. In short, we are mortgaging our future readiness because we have to ensure in today's success against emerging threats. That's why initiatives like BRAC in 2019 are needed to be implemented now. Let us manage your investment, and this will result in $500 million a year in savings and return on your investment within five years. Lastly, while we thank Congress for the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2015, which does provide short-term relief and two years of predictable funding, we request your support for the enactment of our budget as proposed. We request your support for continued funding at levels that are calibrated to our national threats and our interests. And we request 
your continued support for our soldiers, civilians, and their families so that our military and our army will continue to be the most capable fighting force in the world and will win in the decisive battles and keep our families safe here at home. Thank you. General Milley. Thank you, Chairman McCain and Ranking Member Reed and other distinguished members of the committee for the opportunity to appear before you today to discuss our Army. And thank you for your consistent support and commitment to our soldiers, our civilians, and our families. Uh, the United States Army, as I mentioned six months ago when I took this job, must remain uh, the most capable, versatile, and lethal ground force, valued by our friends, and most importantly, feared by our enemies. Uh, this mission, in my view, has one common thread, and that thread is readiness. A ready army is manned, trained, equipped, and well-led as the foundation of the joint force in order to conduct missions to deter and, if deterrence fails, to defeat a wide range of state and non-state actors today, tomorrow, and into the future. As mentioned by the Chairman, 15 years of continuous counterinsurgency operations combined with recent reduced and unpredictable budgets has created a gap in our proficiency to conduct combined arms, arms operations against enemy conventional or hybrid forces, resulting in an Army today that is less than ready to fight and win against emerging threats. America is a global power and our Army must be capable of meeting a wide variety of threats under varying conditions anywhere on Earth. Our challenge today is to sustain the counterterrorist and counterinsurgency capabilities that we have developed to a high degree of proficiency over the last 15 years, while simultaneously rebuilding the capability to win in ground combat against higher-end threats such as Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran. We can wish away these cases but we would be very foolish as a nation to do so. This budget prioritizes readiness because the global security environment is increasingly uncertain and complex. Today, in the Middle East, South Asia, and Africa, we see radical terrorism and the malign influence of Iran threatening the regional order. Destroying ISIS is the top operational priority of the President of the United States, and the Army Conventional and Special Operations Forces are both playing a key part in that effort. In Europe, a revanchist Russia has modernized its military, invaded several sovereign countries since 2008, and continues to act aggressively towards its neighbors using multiple means of Russian national power. The Army will play an increasing role in deterring or, if necessary, defeating an aggressive Russia. In Asia and the Pacific, there are complex systemic challenges with a rising China that is increasingly assertive militarily especially in the South China Seas, and a very provocative North Korea. Both situations are creating conditions for potential conflict. Again, the United States Army is key to assuring our allies in Asia in deterring conflict or defeating the enemy if conflict occurs. While none of us in this room or anywhere else can forecast precisely when or where the next contingency will arise, it is my professional military view that if any contingency happens, it will likely require a significant commitment of Army ground forces because war is ultimately an act of politics requiring one side to impose its political will on the other. While wars often start from the air or the sea, wars ultimately end when political will is imposed on the ground. If one or more possible unforeseen contingencies happen, then the United States Army currently risks not having ready forces available to provide flexible options to our national leadership. And if committed, we risk not being able to accomplish the strategic tasks at hand in an acceptable amount of time. And most importantly, we risk incurring significantly increased U.S. casualties. In sum, we risk the ability to conduct ground operations of sufficient scale and ample duration to achieve strategic objectives or win decisively at an acceptable cost against a highly lethal hybrid threat or near-peer adversary in the unforgiving environment of ground combat. The Army is currently committed to winning our fight against radical terrorists and deterring conflict in other parts of the globe. Right now, as we speak, the Army provides 46 percent of all of the combatant commander demands around the globe and 64 percent of all emerging combatant commander demand, and as pointed out by both the ranking member and the chairman, almost 190,000 American soldiers are currently deployed 
in over 140 countries globally. To sustain current operations and to mitigate the risks of deploying an unready force into the future, the Army will continue to prioritize and fully fund readiness over end strength, modernization, and infrastructure. This is not an easy choice, and we recognize the risk to the future. While the Army prefers our investment for both current and future readiness, the security environment of today and the near future drive investment into current readiness for global operations and potential contingencies. Specifically, we ask your support to fully men and equip our combat formations and conduct realistic combined arms combat training at both home station and our combat training centers. We ask your support for our modernization in five key limited areas, aviation, command and control network, integrated air missile defense, combat vehicles, and the emerging threats programs. And finally, we ask and appreciate your continued support for our soldiers and their families to recruit and retain high quality soldiers of character and competence. We request your support for the FY17 budget, and we thank you for the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2015, which did provide some short-term relief and two years of predictable funding. With your support, we will fund readiness at sufficient levels to meet our current demand, and we will build readiness for contingencies for the future. Thank you for your continued support, and I look forward to your questions.